Welcome to our lecture online. Another very interesting problem you might encounter in an entrance exam somewhere around the world. In this case, particularly in the JEE Advanced. And notice the problem. Here we're given four specific equations that describe the energy of a particle. It would be kind of like the potential energy of a particle. And notice that it depends on some initial condition. You have u, u sub now divided by 2, that's common in all four equations, but then it's dependent upon its position relative to A and relative to X on the horizontal axis. You can see that the particle of unit mass is moving along the X axis under the influence of a force and its total energy is conserved. Four possible potential energies are given. A and U sub not are constants match each energy form with the given statement because now we're also given five specific statements and we're supposed to figure out which of those five are appropriate for each one of the four which means it's not a one-to-one -one correspondence any one of the five could be appropriate for any one of the four equations in any combination possible so it's kind of complicated so the first thing we need to do is graph the potential energy functions of these four equations just to make it a little bit easier. I've already done so. But notice here we have 1 minus x over a quantity squared, the whole thing squared. So this is always positive. That's one way to look at it. If x is 0, this whole thing becomes equal to 1. If x is equal to a or negative a, doesn't matter since it's squared, it'll be 1 minus 1 or 0, which means it is above 0 at x equals 0. In this case, it would be u sub now divided by 2. It would be 0 at both a and negative a. And then as x gets bigger, you would get a greater potential energy. On the second equation, notice that it's essentially a quadratic equation. 0 at the center, and then increases as it goes up. Well, the third equation is a little bit more complicated. This is, this part right here, is the same quadratic equation as before, so you initially start like that, but eventually we have this exponential function, e to the minus x squared over a squared. Notice as x becomes larger than a, this becomes greater than 1, u squared becomes a bigger number, and since it's a negative exponent, it will then decrease the value on both sides. So it goes up, and then by the time you get to the a, it'll start diminishing in value. And then finally, we have this equation right here. We have x over a to the third power, multiplied times 1 over 3, and subtracted from x over a. If it was simply x over a, of course, then you'd get kind of something that looks like this. However, well, actually, you'd get straight lines. You'd get something that looks like this. But then when you subtract this from it, notice that uh, in this case, on the right side, you get to a maximum value when you get x equals a because this is 1 minus 1 third so you get 2 thirds of u sub not over 2 but then as x gets bigger greater than 1 this grows faster than this increases so you're diminishing more and more value it goes on down this way and the same thing happens on the other side it goes negative because x becoming negative you get a negative value you subtract this value from it this becomes bigger and bigger and bigger so again what you find is on the left side then, um, hmm, let's see, did I do that right? Just kind of checking to see if the, this equation looks correct. Um, if x becomes a negative number, yes, because then this becomes positive, and it'll go up, and I think in the end, since that's going to be a positive value, I think the function is going to go like this. I think I made a, yeah, I think I made a slight mistake at the end. I think the function will go like this, and, uh, oh, and I think the function will eventually go like this. I think I got it wrong. I think the function goes like this because this will be the overpowering term and it's negative, so it goes down, and they'll go up like this. I think that's what it looks like. Okay, all right. So the first thing to do is to make sure you have graphs that match your equations. Now we can read each of those statements and see which graphs belong to which statement. First of all, the force acting on the particle at particle equals 0 at x equals a. So let's go to a, and sure enough, the, the force there, it's, the force is in one direction on the left and the other direction on the other side, so it must be 0 in the middle. So that means for a, we get p. The force acting on the particle equals 0 at x equals 0, and you can see that's not the case. Well, let's see here. No, that is the case because it's, it's in one direction on one side, the other direction on the other side so yes 
Q is also an answer right there. For number three, the, uh, I mean, answer R, the force acting on the particle equals zero at x equals negative a, and that's clear the case here. So PQR. And let's see, the particle experiences an attractive force towards x equals zero in the region where x is smaller than a. So when x is smaller than a, no, you need to push the particle up to that because you need to gain potential energy, so that's not the case. So finally, for T, the particle with total energy u sub naught over 4 can oscillate about the point x equals negative a. So as long as the energy is not too big, so that, that it cannot escape in either direction, because if it's too big, then it'll go over here and go to the other side. If the energy is less than there, so this is u sub naught over 2, if the energy is half that much, it's able to oscillate back and forth about negative a, so the answer T works as well. All right, that's the first one. How about the second one? The second one, we have this equation right here. Notice that the force acting on the particle equals zero at x equals a. That is not the case because at x equals a, it's not a trough. So this is negative a, this is a. So that's not the case. The force acting on the particle equals zero at x equals zero. That is the case because we're at the lowest potential energy. So that is correct. That's Q. The force act, let's see here, that's R now. The force acting on the particle equals zero at x equals negative a. That's also not the case because at negative a, we don't have a trough. The particle experiences an attractive force towards x equals zero in the region where x is less than a. So when we're between those two points, in both directions, the force acts towards origin. So that's correct. So that would be S. And T, the particle with total energy of u sub naught over 4 can oscillate about the point x equals negative a and that's not going to be the case because there's no way you can oscillate about that point. So just q and s for the second equation. For the third equation, the force acting on the particle equals 0 and x equals a and let's see here, yes, because when you get to the top it's in one direction on one side, the other direction on the other side, so the answer is yes, p is one of the answers for that. The force act on the particle equals zero at x equals zero. And over here, that's for C, and the answer would be yes, because there the force is in opposite directions on both sides. So that would be P, Q. Next one, the force acting on the particle equals zero at x equals negative A. That's true because it's in different in both directions. So P, Q, R. And the particle experiences an attractive force towards x equals zero in the region x smaller than a. So you can see that if x is between negative a and a, it will it'll have an attractive force in both directions because the potential energy is lower here. So that's S. And finally, can it oscillate about the point x equals negative a? And the answer is no because it's a high point on the potential energy, so it cannot oscillate back and forth. So that's not part of the answer. Finally, the last equation. Notice that the force acting on the particle equals zero at x equals a. And so you can see that that is indeed the case because from both directions, it's the same. It's in opposite, the force is in opposite direction about the point a. So that is a correct answer. So that's P. The force acting on the particle equals zero at x equals zero. And the answer there is no because the force is in the same direction on both sides of x equals zero. So that's not correct. For R, the force acting on the particle equals zero at x equals negative a. You can see on this side, negative a again is a trough, so the force acting on the particle at equals zero at x equals zero. It's the lowest point right there, so the answer is yes, that is R. The particle experiences an attractive force towards x equals zero in the region between a and negative a. And that's not true because it is true on this side, but not true on that side. So that's not correct. And finally, the particle with total energy u sub naught over 4 can oscillate about the point x equals negative a. It's a trough right there. So you can see that the particle can oscillate back and forth. So that is correct. Again, T. So the way to solve this problem is to first graph the four equations to see how the potential energy increases and decreases as the function of x. 
relative to the origin in the points a and negative a and then once you have that it becomes relatively easy to look at the five sentences to see which of those statements actually is correct or is not correct relative to those equations and that is how it's done. For A, it's PQRT, for B, it's QNS, for C, it's PQRNS, and for D, it's PRNT. Yeah, but how do you mark it on the test? Uh, I don't know how they expect you to mark it, so I, I don't know what the mechanism is. It's, you probably have to fill in the bubbles. So you probably have five bubbles for each of the four equations, and you have to fill it in. You get one wrong, and you lose a lot of points. <laughs> And that's how it's done.